I have been here since before you were born. Since before your great, great grandparents were born. I cannot say exactly how long it's been. There is no sun or moon here. The sky, if indeed that is what it is, never darkens or lightens. There is no real way of understanding the passage of time save for the amount that I can tell within myself. I know only that it has been a very, very long time. There is no change to the scenery. No matter how far I try to walk in any direction, there are no green valleys with trees, no pools of water to rest beside. I have not seen even one drop of moisture the entire time I have been here. There is nothing but the continuing jagged rocks. The peaks and valleys are all made of the same thing. There is no smooth place for my feet. I am cut and bruised, yet I do not bleed. I feel pain constantly. There is no reprieve from the pain. It is like nothing I had ever experienced before. But it is not only the physical pain. If one can understand this form that I now inhabit is physical. But there is a pain deep inside. The ever-present knowledge of complete hopelessness. That there is no escape from this place. There is no door. No exit. There is no shelter from this truth. That I am here. And I will not be leaving until that day. It is hot. It is always hot. Yet not the type of heat that one can find shelter from. Under the shadow of the rocks, there is no respite from it. In the valley. On top of the highest peaks I have climbed here. There is no escaping the infernal heat. This is a place of constant want. A place where needs and desires are known fully. And never met. There is no satisfaction of any kind whatsoever here in hell. There is despair. There is no opportunity for joy. For happiness. For contentment. I hear other voices at times. Coming from across the distances. But I have never seen another soul, not once. If I cry unto them, it goes unheard. When they scream, I hear, but they do not respond. We are altogether separated continuously. There is no opportunity for companionship, no one to speak to, no one to hold and console, or be consoled by. It is a place of absolute loneliness and isolation. In this place called hell, there is no escape from the pain of the flesh, the pain of the spirit, or from the pain of the soul. It is an incomprehensible place to those who still live in the earthly plane. I was visited once, many centuries ago, as best as I can understand time in this place, almost immediately after I opened my eyes here, by one who claimed to be a messenger from the Lord God. I was told where I was and why I was here. But I would not accept it for a very, very long time. It seemed as if it was a nightmare I could not wake up from. I had lived what I considered was a good life. I caused no intentional harm to any other living soul. I provided for my family and raised up my children in a way that would enable them to succeed in the world. If they would but apply themselves. I was honest in my business dealings. I did not steal or give false accusations against others. Live and let live was my motto. All should be able to do all they desire to do, as long as it did not infringe on the rights of others. My standard for morality was that which was set by man. I gave little thought to him who sits on the throne of eternity. I was a good man in the earthly realm, and now I am a good man in hell. I denied the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I saw him as a fable, a fairy tale to keep weak people and children in line. I would not accept the grace that was offered to me more than once. I thought I was good enough. I was wrong. I begged. I pleaded. I cried. I became angry beyond any anger I had ever known. I cursed the God of heaven, and then I prayed and prayed, and now I know for a fact that those prayers, those angry words, all that I have done since I arrived here was to no avail. The verse is true. It is appointed a man wants to die. Then the judgment. I will leave here one day. 
the angel told me as much. It is called the Great White Throne of Judgment. It will be my only moments out of hell. I will only be for a moment. Then I will be cast alive into the lake of fire, where there is wailing and gnashing of teeth. I will plead my case. I will beg for mercy. I have rehearsed the words I will say in my mind a thousand times to him who sits upon the throne, to the Lord Jesus Christ, the judge of all mankind. It is my only thread of hope that perhaps he will be merciful. He will see that I have truly repented. Perhaps he will change his mind and allow me into his kingdom. But deep inside I know that will not happen. The second death awaits me. There will be no reprieve. I will suffer incredible torment for denying the sacrifice of his son for me. I will burn and scream forever. The last vestige of hope will be removed from me for all eternity. To those of you that are watching this short film, know this. I have at least another thousand years in this place. And as difficult as it may seem for you to believe, I look forward to that time. For I know what awaits me. If you have not acknowledged Jesus Christ as Lord, if you have not committed the entirety of your life to Him, you will be in this place with me someday. We will never meet. But I will hear you screaming off in the distance. I will hear your cries for forgiveness, for mercy. As I have heard them from the first day I arrived here in hell, you will wander as I have wandered. You will search for a way out that does not exist. You will believe in a false hope. And then you will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ on that last day as well. Then you and I Hell and death, Satan and all the fallen angels will be cast into the lake of fire for all eternity, without hope for more. You may look at this as a poorly made, foolish short film, or you may heed the words that have been spoken here. But in either case, my task has been fulfilled. I have given the warning. How you respond to that warning is entirely in your hands. May God have mercy on your soul, for there is no mercy left for me or for any that are here.